I will be taking class on testicular diseases. Coming to the structurally, the main component of the testicle will be that of the seminiferous tubule. Histologically, if you see, the seminiferous uh, tubules are formed by the several layers of cells, uh, several layers of cells of which first is the germ cell layer, which contains these spermatocytes, spermatocytes, and mature spermatosum. Next is the Sertoli cells that will support as a uh, germ cells and it produce mainly androgen and little estrogen. And third one will be the Fibrovascular stroma, which consists of Leydig cells. Leydig cells also secrete the testosterone and other androgenic hormones in the male. So, Sertoli cells and Leydig cells are called as hormonal producing cells and they are equivalent to the ovarian counterpart, granulosa cell and Tika cell tumor. The main function of the testes is to produce sperm and testosterone. Coming to the congenital anomalies. Cryptoarchidism. Cryptoarchidism is called as undescended testis, that is in which the testicles is arrested at some point when they are traveling from the uh, abdomen to the scrotum. So, of which 70% will be undescended testis lies in the inguinal region and in 25% in the abdomen and in the remaining 5% it may present in any other sites along its descent from the intra-abdominal location to the scrotal sac. So, the which of the main etiology is the mechanical factors including Schwartz uh, spermatic cord or narrow inguinal canal. Third one is the genetic factors like trisomy and maldevelopment of the scrotum or cremaster muscles and third one will be the hormonal factors. Coming to the morphological features, cryptoarchidism is a unilateral in 80% of the cases and bilateral in the rest. Grossly the cryptoarchidism testis will be small in size, firm and fibrotic. Coming to the histology, histology you will see that you will start seeing the changes with uh, after uh, two years of the age. The main change associated with this atrophy, there will be atrophy of the seminiferous tubules and there will be increase in the interstitial fibrovascular stroma and there is a consequence presence of the Leydig cells. Clinical features, clinically it is more asymptomatic if surgically corrected, uh, uh, with if the surgically correction is not done within two years of the age, it can lead into the adverse outcome which includes the sterility, infertility, inguinal hernia and malignancies of which malignancy seminoma is the most common type if you see in this picture if you see here this is a normal testis and if you see the down one here all the seminiferous tubules are destroyed and they are replaced by the fibrous stromas Coming to the male infertility, of male infertility, te testicular clauses will be agonadism, that is total, uh, total absence of the testis, cryptorchidism, that is undescended testis, maturation arrest, failure of the spermatogenesis beyond one of the immature stage, hypospermatogenesis in which all the maturation stage will have the less number of sperms, then Sertoli cell syndrome in which there is an absence of germ cell layers and only Sertoli cells will be present, clean filter syndromes and mum orchitis can result. Next is the inflammations. Inflammation of the testis is called as orchitis and epidymis is called as epididymitis. First coming to the non-specific epididymitis orchitis, they occur in common in non-specific epididymitis or orchitis or in combination of both non-specific epididymitis and orchitis. Their more com commonly spread of infection occurs by means of vast difference or lymphatic or hematogenous route. The main frequently in the infection is caused by the urethritis, cystitis, prostatitis and seminal vesiculitis. Coming to the morphological features, acute orchitis and epidermitis is characterized by the inflammatory cells because they are predominantly inflammations. So, in acute, it consists of more of neutrophil, lymphocyte, plasma cells and macrophages and predominantly neutrophilic abscess. If acute inflammation is not treated, it may uh, progress into chronic inflammations. In chronic inflammation, you will see chronic inflammatory infiltrates and there will be increased fibrous scarring. If this condition is uh, going to persist, it results in the permanent infertility. Next is a granulomatous. It is also called as autoimmune orchitis. It is not because of the non uh, tuberculosis it is non tuberculous granulomatitis which is seen more commonly unilateral painless testicular enlargement particularly in the middle age men the exact etiology is not known but it is suspected to be autoimmune disorder so it is non uh, granulomatous so you will not see any caseous necrosis so microscopic will be the non caseating granulomas lying within the seminiferous tubules and the tubules will show peritubular fibrosis will infiltrated by the lymphocyte and the plasma cells this is a microscopic feature coming to the grossly the affected testis will be enlarged thick and tunica and the cut section of the testis will be grayish white to tan brown in color Next is a tuberculous epidema orchitis. Tuberculous invariably begin in the epidermis and is spread to involve in the testis. Tuberculous epidema orchitis is because of mainly from the secondary tuberculosis from elsewhere in the body. Morphological features grossly, it will be discrete, yellowish, caseous, necrotic areas will be seen. Microscopically, numerous tubercles which may coalescence to form the large caseous mass are seen, and numerous acid fast bacilli can be demonstrated by the Zeal Nielsen staining. So, if you see here, you are seeing the granuloma, typical granuloma, caseous necrosis, uh, Langerhans type of giant cells, epithelial cells, macrophages. You are seeing this is a tuberculous uh, 
epidemo orchitis next is a spermatic granuloma spermatic granuloma is a term used to for the development of the inflammatory lesions due to the invasion of the spermatozoa into the stroma spermatic granuloma may develop due to trauma inflammation and loss of the ligature following vasectomy so here you will see the sperma, spermatic granuloma will is a small nodule 3 mm to 3 cm in diameter firm white to yellowish brown in color histologically it consists of granulomas composed of histiocytes epithelial cells lymphocytes and some neutrophils characteristically the center of the spermatic granuloma contains spermatozoa and necrotic debris that is here the center will be the uh, spermatozoa necrotic debris uh, surrounded by the characteristic features of the granuloma that is epithelial cells macrophages langenhan type of jain cells next is the elephantiasis elephantiasis is the thickening of the scrotal skin resembling the elephant hide and result in the enlargement of the scrotum the condition result from the filariasis in which adult worm lives in the lymphatics while the larva travel in the blood the most important variety of filaria is wicheria bancrofi and it is common in the tropical countries grossly the affected leg and the scrotum will be thickened and the affected area of the skin will show dilated dermal lymphatics and varicosities histologically if you see the changes begins with the lymphatic obstructions by the adult worm the worm is alive dead or calcified or it may be found in the dilated lymphatics or in the lymph nodes dead or calcified worms in the lymphatics is usually followed by the lymphangitis with intense infiltration by the eosinophils next is the torsion of the testis torsion of the testis occurs in a fully descended testis or in an undescended testis and it results in the sudden cessation of the venous drainage and arterial supplies torsion is common in the boys and the young men and it is more associated with the physical trauma coming to the morphological features there may be coagulative necrosis of the testes epidermis or there may be hemorrhagic infarction coming to the varicocele varicocele is nothing but the dilation and elongation and tortuosity of the veins of the pampiform plexus in the spermatic cord the primary or idiopathic form is more frequent and it is common in young married men it is always on the left side as lower of the rectum presses the left vein hydrocel is nothing but abnormal collection of the serous fluid in the tunica vaginalis it may be acute chronic or congenital or acquired the usual cause of trauma systemic edema such as in case of cardiac failure and renal diseases the hydrocel fluid will be generally clear straw colored but it can be slightly turbid or hemorrhagic and the hydrocel sac can be single locules or multi locules coming to the hematocele hematocele is a hemorrhage into the sac of the tunica vaginalis it results from the direct trauma from the injury to a vein by the needle or from the hemorrhagic disease so if you see here there is a hemorrhage in the uh, sac this is called as hematocele hemorrhage reddish brown in color coming to the testicular tumors testicular tumors are caused about 1% of all cancer death they are more common in the white population and less common in the african and asian population and they have trimodal age distribution that is peak during in infancy and other during the late adolescence and third during after 60 years coming to the etiological factors exact etiological of testicular germ cell tumors is not known but the following is the more important causes first is the cryptorchidism that is undescended testis it is more commonly associated with the germ cell tumors particularly seminomas next is the other etiological factors which includes developmental disorder dysgenetic gonads associated with any endocrine abnormalities other other factors which includes orchitis trauma and carcinogens coming to the clinical features and the diagnosis the usual presenting clinical symptoms of the testicular tumors will be gradual gonadal enlargement dragging sensation in the testis metastatic involvement may produce secondary symptoms like pain lymphadenopathy hematomesis and urinary obstructions lymphatic spread occurs in the retroperitoneal paraaortic lymph nodes mediastinal lymph nodes and supraclavicular lymph nodes hematogenous spread primarily occurs in the lung liver and the brain coming to the tumor markers you have to remember two tumor markers were widely used in the diagnosis staging and monitoring particularly other hcg and alpha fetoprotein other tumor markers include carcino embryonic antigen and human placental lactogen germ cell tumors germ cell tumors comprise approximately 95% of the sorry i have not put the classification so once the te testicular tumors more, uh, you have to start with germ cell tumors germ cell tumors are 95 percentage of all testicular tumors and it is frequent before the age of 45 years again germ cell tumors is divided into seminomas it is the germ cell tumors more frequent site is of testicular site other sites includes retroperitoneum and mediastinum of which 
next is the intratubular germ cell pneumas the intratubular germ cell pneumas is defined as a carcinoma in situ in which tumor cells will be seen within the basement membrane that is it won't involve into the stroma now coming to the classical seminoma first and the germ cell neoplasm classical seminoma seminoma is the most common malignancy of the tumor and it is also equivalent to the dysgerminomas in the female it constitutes 45 percentage of the all germ cell tumors and it in, it uh, and it involves 15 percentage of the mixed germ cell tumors seminomas is again divided into classical and spermatocytic seminomas the most common etiological factor is and if undescended testes Okay, morphologically if you see the testes will be enlarged up to 10 times but the contour of the testes will be maintained. The large tumor replaces the entire testes. If the tumor is very small then it will become a, uh, it will have a circumscribed lesion. Cut section will have the grey white lobulated appearance. Okay, so microscopically if you see the tumor cells will be arranged in the lobules. The tumor cells will have clear cytoplasm central nucleus with prominent nucleoli and the tumors are se separated into the lobules by the stroma in the stroma you will see more number of lymphocytes see this is the picture of the gross picture of the testis if you see here uh, the testis sizes increase and if you see there is a homogeneous gray white lesion this is the gross appearance of the seminoma in microscopically if you see the tumor cells are arranged in the lobules which are separated by the fibrous stromas and in the fibrous stroma you will see the lymphocyte each testis will have a clear cytoplasm round nuclei with prominent nucleoli now next is the spermatocytic seminoma. Spermatocytic seminoma is both clinically and morphologically it is distinct form of classical seminomas. Spermatocytic seminomas occurs in the older patients and the tumor is bilateral. Grossly spermatocytic seminoma is homogeneous, larger, softer and more yellow and gelatinous. Remember it should be gelatinous whereas it is more so classical seminoma will be large firm uh, in nature. And if you see the microscopic, the tumor cells will vary from the smaller size to larger size. Generally, it will be of intermediate size and will have the eosinophilic cytoplasms. And in the stroma, you will not see any lympho uh, lymphocytes. So, the classical seminoma only you will see tumors in the lobulated form with the stroma having lymphocytes. In spermatocytic seminomas, the tumor cells vary from smaller to bigger size and it will have the eosinophilic cytoplasm and the stroma will not have the lymphocytes. Next coming to the embryonal carcinomas, pure embryonal carcinomas will comprise 30% of germ cell tumors and the mixed germ cell under 40% will have the mixed germ cell tumors. Mixed germ cell tumors means that is one part of the testes will show the, uh, uh, one part of the testes will show uh, uh, one type of uh, tumor and the other one will show the other type of tumor. Suppose one will show as a classical seminoma, the other, uh, other part may show the embryonal tumors. So that is called as mixed germ cell tumors of which 90% are associated with elevation of alpha fetoprotein and HCG. Remember testicular tumors you have to remember first to HCG and alpha fetoprotein. So coming to the morphological features, here you can see the tumor will be very small in size but the contour will be distorted whereas in case of classical seminomas, the contour will not be distorted and cut surface will show areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. This is a very important point, you should remember areas of hemorrhage and necrosis, you should remember the embryonal carcinomas. So coming to the microscopic pattern, microscopic the tumors will be arranged in the glandular, tubular, papillary and solid. The tumor cells will be highly anaplastic. Uh, cells that is of large cells, indistinct border, uh, uh, pleomorphic cells and prominent nucleoli, irregular nuclear border and mitotic figures will be, mitotic figures and the tumor gen cells are more frequent, hemorrhage and necrosis are associated. The stroma is not as distinct as seminomas. See, embryonal carcinomas are more aggressive than the seminomas. So, all the tumor cells will be very pleomorphic with irregular nuclear border and prominent nucleoli. But the stroma you here it won't be very classic. Next is the yolk sac tumor. Yolk sac tumor is the most common testicular tumors in infants and young children up to, uh, up to the age of 4 years. In adults, however, yolk sac tumor in pure form is run but it can occur in the mixed germ cell tumors. Remember, 100% it is associated with elevated alpha fetoprotein. So, coming to the morphological features, grossly the tumor will be soft, yellow, mucoid with areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. Microscopically, the tumor cells will be arranged in the papillary tubular and solid arrangement and the tumor cells will be flattened to cuboidal with clear vacuolated cytoplasm. Next most common uh, characteristic feature of Oxac tumor is the Schiller dual bodies. If you see here the tumor cells are arranged around the blood vessels and they are engulfed in the system. There is a system 
within the cyst there will be two muscles that when the two muscles will encircle the blood vessel this is called the silver dual bodies and it is a characteristic feature of the yolk sac tumors next is a polyembryoma is tumor composed predominantly of embryonal bodies next is a choriocarcinoma choriocarcinoma is pure form is highly malignant tumor and is composed of syncytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast however pure uh, form is extremely rare and it often occurs in combination with other germ cell tumors so coming to the grossly the tumor will be small soft hemorrhagic and necrotic it will be there microscopically you will see the syncytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast and there won't be any formation of the placenta type villi next is the teratomas teratomas are nothing but tumors which arises from all the three germ layers it is ectoderm endoderm mesoderm so testicular tumors are more common in infant and children and about 40 percentage of the testicular tumors occur in infant whereas in adults they comprise only 5 percentage of all germ cell tumors morphologically if you see we are dividing into mature immature and teratoma with malignant transformations grossly the teratomas will be large gray white masses and cut surface will show variegated appearance that is it consists of gray areas cystic areas honeycombed areas and there can be bouquet of cartilage and bo bones dermoid tumors are more commonly that is teratomas are more commonly seen in female than in case of males see teratoma means it is occurring because of it is involving all three germ layers of the cells so you will find all three uh, germ cells morphologies so the like cartilage also you can see suppose if you are taking a testicular mass you are cutting it off and cut section you can see the if you are seeing uh, uh, like cartilage res, uh, cartilage bone uh, pultaceous material hair follicles hair this all see means that it shows that all the three layers of the uh, germ cells are involved so it is a teratoma so teratoma can be identified with the gross only when you are seeing variegated appearance like this one area showing very hard and calcified areas one area showing tooth tooth also you can see hair you are seeing so that is called as teratomas so mature teratomas composed of so when you coming to the microscopically when you are seeing under the microscope you will see all three layers of the cells that is you will see respiratory epithelium you can see squamous cells epithelium you can see hair follicles you can see uh, calcification you can see that is the mature teratoma will compose a variety of well differentiated structures like cartilage smooth muscle respiratory intestinal epithelium and cyst lined by the squamous and transitional epithelium neural epithelium in case of immature teratoma immature teratoma is not is mostly it will resemble that of the embryonal tissue type of elements so that is called as immature teratomas next is a teratoma with malignant transformation in which one part will go into the malignant transformation suppose if you are seeing respiratory epithelium and below the respiratory epithelium you are seeing more of uh, malignant pleomorphic cells then that the respiratory epithelium has gone into the respiratory epithelium which is seen in the uh, teratoma has gone into the malignant transformation like adenocarcinomas so that is called as teratoma with malignant transformation which is very rare see if you see here this is a testicular tumor normally you should see seminiferous tubule but you are here you are seeing the neural tissues squamous epithelium glands so these are all teratomas now coming to the mixed germ cell tumor about 60 percent of germ cell tumors have more than one above the histological types and are called as mixed germ cell tumors so what are the most common combination it can occur is teratoma embryonal carcinoma yolk sac tumor embryonal carcinoma and teratomas seminomas and embryonal carcinomas now coming to the sex cause stromal tumors so we have completed germ cell tumors next is the sex cause stromal tumors of sex cause stromal tumors this tumor which are arising the most important cells are Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. Coming to the Leydig cell tumors, these are hormonal producing tumors. Leydig cell tumors are quite uncommon. They occur at any age but are more frequent in the age group between 20 to 50 years. These uh, Tika cells will characteristically secrete androgen, androgen and estrogen and rarely corticosteroids. Bilateral tumor may occur typically in congenital uh, adrenogenital syndrome. So coming to this Leydig cell tumors, it is secreting the hormone so when you are coming above when you are there a question is asked about hormonal producing testicular tumors you have to remember right leydig cell tumors because these tumors will produce androgen estrogen and corticosteroids next is the morphological tumor 
The tumor appears as a small, well demarcated and lobulated nodule. Cut surface is homogeneous. Histologically, the tumor cells are arranged in sheets and cords of normal looking Leydig cells. They contain abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and drinky crystal and a small central nucleus. Next is a Sertoli cell tumor. It can occur in any age but it is more frequent in the infant and the children. These tumors also will produce estrogen and androgen and it occurs gynecomastia when there is a more estrogen secretion. So, this is also a hormonal producing testicular tumors. Next is the morphological features of the Sertoli cell tumor. Grossly the tumor is large, firm, round and well circumscribed. Cut surface of the tumor is yellowish or yellow gray. Microscopically Sertoli cell tumor is composed of Sertoli cells arranged in tubules. Majority of the Sertoli cell tumors are benign and 10 percentage metastasis to lymph node. Next is a granulosa cell tumor. It is extremely rare and it is more common with the ovarian counterpart. So, you can refer the ovarian counterpart. Okay. Next is a mixed germ cell and sex card stromal cell tumor. That is, you will have a germ cell tumors along with the sex card stromal tumor. Testes will show one area as germ cell and the other area was sex card stromal tumor. So, the more common example is gonadoblastomas. Gonadoblastomas, dysgenetic gonadus and undescended testes are the more etiological factors. The patient will commonly be of intersexual, particularly phenotypic female and most of the gonadoblastomas secrete androgen and therefore they produce virilization in female phenotype. A few however secrete estrogens. So, coming to the morphological future, the tumor is of variable size, yellowish white and soft. Microscopically, it consists of two principal type of cells. Large cells will resemble like that of a seminoma and small cells will resemble the Sertoli Leydig cell tumors. Call exner bodies, granulosa cell tumor may be present. Prognosis depends upon the type of the germ cells present. So, this is also a hormonal secreting tumor cells. So, when they are asking about hormone secreting testicular tumors, you should write about Leydig cell tumors, Sertoli cell tumors and gonadoblastomas. So, coming to the other tumors, what are the other tumors involved is malignant lymphomas which comprises only 5 percentage of the testicular malignancy and it is common testicular tumor in elderly. Other rare tumors which includes are the plasmocytoma, leukemic infiltration, carcinoid tumors, hemangiomas, sarcomas and metastatic tumors. So, this is your class schedule for the month of the June. So, we have covered till testicular diseases. Next will be your prostate and later after the prostate class, you will have the test on kidney and LGT. Kidney, uh, LUT and MGT. Okay. So, lower uterine tract and male genital tract, you will have test on next Friday. Okay. So, this is your teaching schedule for the month of June. So, now I will just give you within 2 minutes, I will just give you the outline about the testicular tumors. Testicular tumors, if you see germ cell tumors, sex cord stromal tumors, mixed germ cell and mixed germ cell and sex cord stromal tumors. Germ cell you will see seminomas, yolk sac tumors, embryonal tumors, gonad uh, uh, choriocarcinomas, teratomas and then sex cord stromal tumors, Sertoli Leydig and Sertoli Leydig cell tumor. These are hormonal producing tumors and in case of uh, mixed germ cell and sex cord stromal cell tumors, you will have gonadoblastoma that is also hormonal producing tumors. So, coming to the same germ cell tumors, seminoma is the most common cause and seminoma again divided into classical and spermatocytic seminomas of which classical seminoma is more common and what you have to remember classical seminoma is uh, it occurs before 45 years of the age and the tumor cells will be well lobulated and the stroma will have the characteristic lymphocyte infiltration. Whereas in spermatocytic seminomas, you won't see the uh, lymphocytic infiltrations. In case of embryonal tumor, they are more aggressive tumors and uh, you have it will be more distorted. The gross appearance will be more distorted. Testicles will be there and you will see lot of aggressive cells. This is very highly pleomorphic cells you will be seen and there will be areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. Yolk sac tumor, you have to remember two points. It is always associated with alpha feature protein and it is seen in the infants before 4 years of the age and then Schiller Juller bodies in the microscopic findings. These 3 points are very important. In case of granulosa cell tumor, choriocarcinomas, they are more commonly associated with the female uh, ovarian tumor. They are most commonly seen in the ovarian tumors and even teratomas are also most commonly associated with ovarian tumors. Teratoma are nothing but tumors which involve all the 3 layers of the germ cells that is ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. So, obviously you have to see all the epithelial so, you will see when you are cutting on the gross only, you will be able to know, you will be seeing tooth, uh, cartilage um, and then hair follicles. So, you will see all the uh, cells from the all the three germ cell layers. So, microscopically you will see again see squamous cells, uh, respiratory epithelium, intestinal epithelium, uh, hair follicles and then uh, cartilage, 
you can see all this in the microscopically in a testis when you are taking a section of a testis and when you are seeing all the variegated appearance then it is called as teratomas and if you are seeing the mature element it is called as mature teratomas and if it is of primitive or embryonal type of tissue then you call it as immature teratomas in teratomas one of the epithelium can turn into malignancies and it can produce adenocarcinomas or squamous cell carcinoma suppose a squamous epithelium is turning into a carcinoma it produces a squamous cell carcinoma suppose there is a respiratory epithelium in the uh, teratoma is transformed into malignancy it produces adenocarcinomas which is extremely rare teratoma turning into malignant transformation is very rare next is a sex called stromal tumor sex called stromal tumor are again sertoli leigic tumors these are a hormonal producing tumors and both mixed germ cell and sex called stromal tumors gonadoblastomas this is also hormonal producing tumors and then uh, mixed germ cell tumors it is two type of germ cell tumors can occur and uh, that is, those are called as mixed germ cell tumors so other tumors and rare tumors so this is this finishes the testicular tumor among benign condition you have to be thorough with the undescended testis such as cryptorchidism generally testis will be uh, descended from the abdomen to the uh, scrotum if the uh, descent is not happening it is called as undescended testis and it is a more uh, common etiological factors will be mechanical uh, defect or hormonal defect and it is very important to fix the uh, testis into the scrotum before 2 years of age or at least before the prepubertal age because it has a high chance of turning into malignancy that is particularly seminomas or it can become ster uh, sterility or infertility then we are coming to the inflammation you will have a non specific epidemoarchitis or uh, uh, epidemoarchitis because of the infections or uh, next is the uh, granulomatous inflammations granulomatous inflammation is particularly because of uh, uh, autoimmune uh, inflammation then uh, you may also have uh, tuberculous orchitis which is because of the tuberculosis that is caseating granulomas you will see next is the uh, autoimmune you will see non caseating granulomas so uh, non caseating granulomas you will see then is a tuberculosis then spermatocytic granulomas in which sperm will be sp uh, spilled into the stroma because of that you will get a granuloma so in this characteristic feature you will see the sperm in the center so the sperm and necrotic debris then is hydrocell hydrocell is a collection of a clear fluid into the testis are called as hydrocell hematocells is a uh, blood filled uh, fluid collection is called as hematocell okay so this is the testis and the most common a uh, testicular disease and most common question would be on testicular tumors so you have to write the tableau column which is given in your book please may, uh, look at that uh, classification and then uh, next question will be hormonal producing testicular tumors i have told you already sertoli leydig and gonadoblastomas so these two questions were very important and then cryptorchidism undescended testis can as be can be asked as a short note okay thank you